Welcome to Ham Smarter with Vince VE6LK. Today I am going to show you a more in-depth view of the coolest radio called the HF Signals Z Bit X. This is a QRP radio with built-in microprocessors, a waterfall, and a touch screen. And as you can see, I'm holding it in my hand. It is small. It weighs under a pound with the two 18650 batteries that you supply. Um, and it drives on six to nine volts. It does FT8 built in CW, phone, and a whole pile of other things. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's take a look now at uh, sideband and let's see uh, how things differ with that uh, from the prior modes that we've been working with. So here I've got the radio set on uh, 20 meters and I'm listening to some guys uh, chatting somewhere and before I turn up the audio you can see that I'm in uh, sideband mode. I'm on 20 meters um, and the waterfall so the, the big difference you might have noticed right along the bottom is all those buttons from the previous modes uh, have gone away. The modes and the buttons down at the bottom of the screen will switch depending on what mode you're doing. Now it's not always perfect and I'm going to show that to you in a minute that it doesn't always overwrite the buttons properly. That's a software glitch. You can work around it. It's very easy to do. So let's take a peek first at uh, at what we got here going on on the display. So first off I've got my band scope set to span 25k and I've got my band width at 3000. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my span to 10k and now you can see the band scope uh, sits to 10k. There's another bug you're going to notice is that uh, the scope at the top doesn't quite align with the scope at the bottom. This is one of those really charming little uh, software glitches or maybe it's this way on purpose. I haven't dug into that problem myself. I can live with it. So, um, But let's take a peek at the other cool things you do with this now. And now let's change the bandwidth on the signal and watch what happens with the uh, spectrum part of the waterfall display. As I widen this out, it widens out as well to show you what you're listening to and uh, display it for you graphically. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you sort of expect that, um, but it's one of those things that you sort of notice after the fact, right? And so I'll turn the bandwidth uh, back down and we'll go to 3000 hertz. And then I'm going to get ready to turn the volume up just in case these guys were gabbing around on a Friday morning having their coffee chat. They're going to actually come back to us, and you'll hear what it sounds like through the speaker. As you will expect with a little tiny three-quarter inch by one inch speaker, it's kind of tinny sounding. It's just the way it, uh, it goes. Uh, but it's perfectly intelligible, as uh, hopefully you'll shortly witness. All right, so here I've got uh, WWV tuned up on the screen, and uh, let's take a peek at what we got going on. So uh, first off, I'll turn up the audio. You can hear it. There we go, you heard the tone there. So we can play around with the uh, bandwidth setting and we can narrow it down. Kind of still hear the click there. And you can see the water, the uh, spectrum width is uh, working with us as we change it. I'm going to change the span down to 10k and now the waterfall gets a little wider. Once again it's offset from that blue square. That's a little bit irritating but it's just a lovely, it's a lovely charming aspect of using this uh, really funky radio. Okay, so I'll turn the audio down. I'll show you a couple of other things uh, while I'm here. I'm clearly outside of the amateur bands. Now the menu has changed to a simple TX and RX. Uh, in phone mode, this little black thing uh, up here in this corner 
that's the built-in microphone that's a little electrat element and it's actually reasonably sensitive now you can turn the drive up on it with the mic here and if you turn it up too much you'll see some distortion so first off let me show you what it looks like when it starts transmitting I'm out of band first off so I'm gonna show you two things at once here so I'm going to say transmit. My drive is all the way up and I'm talking and you can see my voice on the spectrum display but you can see I am not putting out any power and if you could see my power meter right now you would concur that I'm not putting out any power. So the radio prevents you from transmitting outside of the band even though it looks like it's transmitting outside of the band. It won't let you. So that's a good thing. Now let's take a look at that drive issue. It, the manual does state this if you turn up the drive too much, you start to see some distortion happening. There we go. And so that's a, that's a bad thing. Um, you don't want to be uh, distorting too much. What else can I show you? I said there was an interesting bug when you uh, switched modes. So let's take a look at that. When you choose the mode, you should see the row of buttons now at the bottom change. So sideband, upper and lower sideband are the same. CW should change to the buttons at the bottom and if it doesn't all you need to do is click on the menu button and click on close and then all those uh, buttons let me turn that off turn the volume all the way down all the buttons have uh, returned when you switch modes so CW reverse to listen to the opposite sideband there's the FT8 so you can see that the FT8 buttons and the CW buttons are different. I've programmed a POTA calling button and a thank you 72, but if I uh, switch to FT8, the thank you 72 becomes a reply. So it does switch if you cycle through the modes slowly. But if you cycle through them very quickly like this, there's no guarantee that they're going to switch and go properly. So that's uh, another interesting um, thing you need to understand about the radio.